Stand-up comedian Charlie Behrens will give two shows tomorrow at the Bloomington Center for the Performing Arts. Behrens worked as a broadcast journalist before launching his comedy career. He dabbled in sports and entertainment news and won an Emmy for reporting the cost of water for a TV station in Dallas. These days, Behrens is focused on sketch, stand-up, and comedy writing, poking fun at the Midwest, with a new tour crisscrossing the region for the next couple of weeks. Born and raised in Wisconsin, Barron should have known better than to tour the Midwest in the dead of winter, but he did it anyway. We did Fargo two weeks ago, and it's the coldest it was anywhere in the world was in Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah, you know, I wasn't thinking. Where exactly in Wisconsin are you from? I'm from uh, the Milwaukee area. Milwaukee like, area. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the various uh suburbs in Milwaukee and grew up there um, and then went to UW, uh, go Badgers. Why did you decide to major in journalism? I felt like there were a lot of things that were underreported or that were um, not really um, reaching people. And I felt like that there were a lot of powerful people in control of things that shouldn't necessarily be uh, in control of them. And I thought it was a matter of uh, getting down to the facts. And then once the facts were presented, people would see that and then things might change. You know, when you're in college, you got that kind of, uh, I can, I can uh, maybe kind of fix something, you know, a little bit. And then you realize that the limitations of that, you realize maybe ego has something into play uh, in that. And and you realize some things are broken, but they're broken in ways you didn't even think they were broken. There's so much complication in, in these things. And then the question becomes, how do you convey that to people in a way that they'll understand and care about? I mean, comedy is the same thing, right? But you have the luxury of hyperbole. Exactly. And, and not everything has to be about things that need to change. You know, right. people have a very short attention span for that. And I think we see that with the current news cycle. It's you know, um, this is a huge problem. Um, we should fix it. And then, uh, you know, we either fix it a little bit or don't fix it at all. And then before we know it, it's on to the next thing. I kind of wonder if your Manitowoc Minute has anything to do with your impressions of the field now. Yeah, when I first started doing um Manitowoc Minute, it was kind of I was in local news and then, you know, I had an accent or whatever. And so my character was basically the guy who didn't fix the accent, but just embraced it, doubled down on it. You know, the way journalism is now, I think there are a lot of really good journalists out there. And I think they're largely underfunded um, because if you look at supply and demand, people don't demand truth. They demand the loudest, most obnoxious voice telling them the truth they want to believe. But I, I don't want to be pessimistic about it um, or cynical about it um, because I do think there are a lot of people doing a lot of great things. And I do think the truth inevitably rises to the top. It's just how much damage do the lies do along the way. We hold on to this idea that the Midwest is misrepresented by the national media and the national narrative. And I think that one really clear example of that was the shooting in Kenosha. Um, and I'm getting to a question that gets us away a little bit from news. Um, uh -huh. But but I do want to pause there to just ask for your idea of how the, the Midwest is perceived. Um, because a lot of your comedy does double down on these stereotypes. <laughs> um, hilarious and largely accurate stereotypes about Wisconsin specifically, but also the Midwest. And and whether or not, you know, you feel that the national news media is is really being fair in their in their portrayal of us, I guess. You know, a, a lot of my comedy looks at um, the uh, sort of the stereotypes and um, and and acknowledges them and doubles down on them and exaggerates them for comedic effects, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, there's I try to find the heart in um in it and i think the heart the truth of it is that you know we are a be nice first ask questions later kind of a place and it, and a lot of times what i'm doing is i'm parodying the midwest at its best mind you i know that there is a whole history of for instance redlining in milwaukee and racial injustices and um you know 
the entire Midwest was land that belonged to um, uh, indigenous folks. And, you know, largely they've been pushed out and we named streets and cities uh, in its place. And I, I'm not naive to that, but I think what I try to focus on is the good that I see in, in hopes that it will amplify if you're always calling out the wrong there's almost uh, there's not as much motivation for people to almost do the right I, I don't know if that's the right thing or the wrong thing but that's how i've approached it you do have midwest centric comedy how is it perceived in other areas of the of the country you know i started doing stand-up before i started doing midwest stand-up so if i'm in a room i i can switch it up i can just do straight stand-up straight bits mm -hmm. um and for a while my comedy was very midwest yeah like almost you had to be there to get it yeah um and but that worked out because midwest people travel they leave the midwest and the thing about midwest people they, they want to find each other again and they do that largely at these shows, which I was lucky enough to put on. My new hour is less about the Midwest, about the Midwest, and more like uh, the perception of a guy from the Midwest, you know? Well, the previous special also was very bluntly critical of Illinois driving and Illinois football. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Yeah, and that's not going to change. I hate to yeah. say it, you know? <laughs> I mean, it, it'll change when you guys learn how to drive, that's for sure. And, you know, when you find out that there are other options other than Chicago Bears and the NFL and, um, you know, but... Um, yeah, I, I can't help that. You know, some things you can't change. When you think about uh, how your career has evolved, do you, do you run yourself through the what ifs? Uh, you can spend some time doing that if you want. And I'm sure I have. Life is just like, you know, you trying to get your way up north. OK, I mean, you know, you, you don't have to just take 94 all the way up there, you know, and then dip out around Toma. You know, you don't have to do that. You could also take 41 North and then you pick up the 45 street routes, uh, you know, kind of back highway routes, you know. And even if you do that, you can your GPS is always, you know, redirecting you or you can just stop at the, the gas station. You can ask someone how to get there and they're going to tell you a thousand different ways. Point is, is as long as you um, just uh, to borrow one of my catchphrases, if I can be so corny, as long as you keep her moving. Uh, you're going to get to where you're going. Charlie Barron's good old-fashioned tour stops for two shows tomorrow at the Bloomington Center for the Performing Arts. The 7 p.m. show is sold out, but there are plenty of seats available for the late show starting at 9 p.m. Barron spoke with WGLT's Lauren Warnicke. Support for arts and culture coverage on WGLT comes from PNC Financial Services. PNC is committed to supporting local arts and culture events in the communities they serve.